Hello everybody, this is Mr. Fixit here. Today we're going to do something a little different. Usually I just do video game videos, but I'm switching a little bit up today and doing another type of game, D&D. Today we're going to look at the science behind a fan favorite idea that I've seen on things like Reddit and different forums called the Peasant Railgun. What is a Peasant Railgun, you ask? Well, the theory is this. Say you have a big titan or monster near a town that you need to get rid of. You could go fight it and potentially risk your lives, or you could break the mechanics of the game. To do this, you get a line of peasants, put them in a line of maybe, say, like 500 peasants, put a 10-foot pole at the back of the peasant furthest away, and then you're going to pass the 10-foot pole from one end to the other in one turn. By the end of the turn, the pole will excel quickly towards the enemy and do massive damage. As a disclaimer, I'll be treating all this in accordance with pre-existing D&D rules, which will actually help simplify it a little. Along with that, I will also be using Imperial units, but put the metric counterpart in next to my units. Let's go back, or maybe jump forward depending on your schooling, to Physics 1. Your professor was probably talking a little thing called energy, how something can have kinetic and potential energy. We're going to throw potential energy out the door, because we don't need it here. Kinetic energy is an energy an object has when it is in motion. To use an easy to understand example from Khan Academy, which let's be honest, if you're an engineering student or just a STEM student in general, you probably use Khan Academy and other YouTube videos to help you get through school. I know I did. To think of this, think of a flying squirrel that collides with a stationary chipmunk. Because of that collision, some of the kinetic energy will transfer from the squirrel to the chipmunk. If you want to read more about kinetic energy, I'll post a link to the website in the description. Before we can look at how much kinetic energy the railgun can do, first we have to have some basis of real world equivalent to the world of D&D. To this we'll be looking at your basic arrow. According to the player's handbook, an arrow weighs 0 0.05 pounds. Next, we have to find the velocity at which an arrow travels. According to the Sword Valley Archer's website, a recurved bow, which is your standard fantasy bow, can fire an arrow at 225 feet per second. We then use this information into our handy dandy kinetic energy equation and find that an arrow has about 39 foot pounds of kinetic energy. Now, you might be saying, that's cool, how does this relate to DD? How is this going to work with the peasant cannon? This will actually be the basis of the whole theory. So now that an arrow can do 39 foot-pounds of energy, this means that when you pull back your bow and angle it at the right angle, you can get the max velocity, which is the 225 feet per second, and that would be doing max damage. And since an arrow does a d6 of damage, we'll consider the 39 foot-pounds to be 6 damage. With this, we can easily find out how much foot-pounds are needed to cause 1 damage. So you just divide the 39 by 6 damage, and you get that approximately 1 damage is 6.55 foot-pound per damage. This gives us a real-world correlation to a D&D mechanic. Now, this obviously isn't exact because things like staffs can also do a D6 of damage, but as long as we use this consistently now and possibly in the future, it will give us a good idea on how much damage a thing can do. So let's get to this peasant railgun. First, an adventurer has to think about how many peasants they want in their railgun. For this example, I hired 500 peasants for it. Now, we know that medium creatures take up approximately 5 feet of space. So we can multiply the amount of peasants by 5, and we find the distance the pole must travel in one turn. In this case, it is 2,500 feet in 6 seconds. This gives us a velocity of 417 feet per second. Again, realistically this is not possible, but by D&D mechanics, it's perfectly fine. Now you're saying, you have to be lucky and get all 500 peasants in the correct initiative order. And I've got a little secret for you. There's this awesome thing called ready in action. With ready in action, you can hold your action for a specific thing and then trigger it. So, you just look at your DM and say, all right, all right, I might be peasant number 365, but I'm the first one up in initiative. I'm going to hold my action, so as soon as that 10-foot pole gets past me, I'm going to take it, pass it to the next one. And you just do all this for one turn. So maybe you want a buffer of like 10 peasants in case the creature gets annoyed and starts attacking them. So, I mean, but we're going to keep with 500. So, everyone does that for one turn. And then you keep on doing that until the person, the first person at the end, launches it down. And then everyone will use the reaction, it'll be like a domino effect, so everyone will just go and you'll launch it out. So now, doing the same thing, we have to calculate the kinetic energy of that 10-foot pole, which putting it in our equation gives us a kinetic energy of 18,871 foot-pounds. Dividing that by our foot-pound per damage, we'd be rolling 1d 2,881. To put this in perspective, of other dice, that would be 144 d20s, 240 d12s, 288 d10s, 360 D8s, 480 D6s, and 720 D4s. You're cooking this Titan. I was wondering how this would look with different number of peasants. I created this graph, and if you had a total of 1,050 peasants, you'd be doing a max damage of 18,293 damage in one round of combat. 
That's a lot of damage. How about a little more? <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. Now you're telling me you have to pay all this presents, so this probably is not a viable option. That's fair. So let's do the math on that. According to the player's handbook, an unskilled laborer only costs two silver per day. And since you're just passing a pole, I don't think you need much skill. So adding them all up, it would only cost you about 210 gold pieces. For a whole adventuring party, that's not a lot. That's a little more than splint armor for your tank. Oh wait, I forgot to add in the price for a 10 foot pole. So sorry for that inaccurate estimate of how much it would cost. With adding in the price of a 10 foot pole, it'd come to a grand total of 210.05 gold pieces. That monster better watch out. Of course you have to hit this monster, so maybe you want to go with some skilled laborers, but when it only takes 12 seconds to launch that puppy, I think you can roll with the dice and just test your luck. Sieges in this world probably consist of lines of people just throwing poles at cast. I hope you all enjoyed this little thought experiment. If you're a DM and your players are trying to hire a large amount of people at once, I'd question their motives and see what they're up to. If you want to see anything similar to this, please leave a comment so we can both come up with new ideas that'd just be fun for everyone. I hope you all have a fantastic day. This is Mr. Fixit here, signing out.